Hello and welcome to another InventRight TV show. My name is Andrew Krauss. I co-founded InventRight with Stephen Key over 21 years ago, and we've been coaching and mentoring inventors ever since to licensed products. We have a very, very special guest on today. His name is Sebastian Flores, and he has a really cool product, and he's going to tell his story. He started working on this invention when he was 13, and now he's 15. So if that doesn't inspire you, I don't know what does. Um, Sebastian, welcome. Hi, thank you for having me. So instead of trying to describe the product, why don't we show you, I think you got to have a 45 second video and we'll go ahead and play that and then we'll come on back. So here you go, take a look. Okay, we're back. Sebastian, really cool product. Lots of fun. Lots of fun. Yes. I'm going to ask you the most generic question ever that everybody's probably already asked you, which is, how did you come up with the idea? I know, but people want to know. So how did you come up with the idea? Um, I've told this story many times, and I've actually gotten pretty good at it. So when I was 11, I had this one friend who would always come over to our house and he'd find some excuse to just be in the kitchen where we kept our jar of candy. So he would always he'd get a glass of water or he'd just wander in there and I'd find him with his hand in the candy jar. So when his birthday came around, and at this point I was like, I had kind of a gift phase where I loved making people their own cards or uh, just something handmade I could give them for their birthdays. Yeah. So when his birthday came around, I knew I wanted to make him something to do with candy. So I settled on his own candy dispenser. So I, I looked online, I found maybe one or two YouTube videos, but none of them were really right. So I just went in our recycling bin and I found an old candy box and a paper towel roll, some sheets of paper, and I got my hot glue gun out. And I spent, I spent a few hours just sitting on the floor cutting up that, that box and the paper towel roll until I had a working candy dispenser and that picture is actually included in all of my products just so you can see like the the very first one compared to the one that you make yourself and when I gave it to him it was just this super special gift and I remember the look on his face and he just he loved it and then two years later in 2019 when I wanted to kind of find a way to start uh, earning on money for myself Mm -hmm. I wanted to buy my own drum kit that I could play, you know, learn how to play the drums. But being a 13-year-old, I couldn't go out and work at, like, a retail job or anything like that because right. of state laws. But I could work in a family business. So I started my own family business called Octogifts, where I sold these, actually, these right here, these paper hearts mm -hmm. that are candy dispensers. And it was supposed to be like a fun Valentine's Day, like play on the box of chocolates. And they ended up doing really well. My mom posted it on Facebook and the five or so that I put up there sold out in about 12 hours. So I made more and I put them up. And then past Valentine's Day, I couldn't really do it anymore. So I made like a generic version. This is just supposed to be like the mm -hmm. standard yeah. gumball machine. You're a pretty talented uh, designer with paper there. Thank you. I've it's always been kind of like origami stuff like that. I just love. So you really stepped up a, up a notch from most kids. They, they'll make cards for their their parents or siblings, and it, it really means a lot. You have no idea how much it means to a parent to get a personalized card from their kid, and then you really stepped up a notch with the whole gift. Like you took, it's like a card. It's a gift. It's candy. It's everything that people like, and and you you, you talked about how. It was interesting. You talked about how it made you feel when you gave that gift. Was that to your friend? Was that was that a big driver for you? And then in addition, like you're looking to make some money, too. So did it all kind of come together with your skill and wanting to make things with wanting to make people happy and wanting to make money? And then all those three of those things kind of came together. Is that what happened? You may, maybe you haven't thought about it like that before. Yeah, I've actually never thought about really thought about it that way. But I can definitely say I've 
obviously try to sell people an experience because hmm. it's not just a product that you give someone. It's the experience of building it yourself and then getting to give it to them and say, here, look what I made for you. Yeah. Now, when when people buy this from you, do they put the candy in there themselves? You probably don't sell it with the candy. So they feel like somewhat involved in it. And Actually, in- I, I, um, I sell them as these kits. I mean, I don't actually have one here to show you. I just shipped out an order of 14 of them. I don't have any with me right we'll, now. We'll throw it up on, we'll, we'll do an edit later and throw it up right here so people can look at it. I actually sell them as these kits that come in like a plastic envelope that just has all the parts you need. And there's a little QR code on the back. So if you scan that, it takes you to a YouTube video that just walks you through step by step how to build it. So it really oh, is cool. something you made for them. That is, that's cool. So they are assembling it then? Yes, they are. It comes, when you ship it, it ships flat. Mm-hmm. Did you learn any, did you just want to do that from the get go? It's like, because that's a fair amount of work. So you're being really smart here. You're getting your, it's like Ikea furniture. You're getting them to do all the work, but it's not a bad thing. In this case, Ikea furniture, it is a bad thing. I hate putting that stuff together. But with this, it's a gift that they're giving somebody and it makes them feel good. It makes them feel like they created it, which they kind of did. Mm-hmm. At first, I was selling them just pre-built, but it took a lot of time to build them. It was maybe like... Yeah. Def- I could definitely couldn't make them as fast as I make the kits now. So not necessarily... It wasn't at the beginning. It wasn't like, I want to sell people kits. It was more like, hey, what if I sold them as kits and people loved it? So I kept doing it. Right. Do you get yourself a die cutting machine where you would you would it's a little metal cut die cutting thing and it, you stamp it down and it cuts it for you or how do you or do you do it manually or what are you doing there? I have a couple machines that are like the desktop uh, cutters like the Silhouettes and the Crickets and then I also have a die cutter so for the really simple pieces I can just crunch them out. Right, right. Wow. Okay. Pretty soon you'll get a. Um, do they use laser cutters to cut paper? They they just they have machines that have a little cutter. What what the cr- cricket is that what you call it? Yeah. And you yeah. program it actually. It's like a little laser cutter, but not a laser. It's an actual little razor blade that goes and cuts it. Right. Mm-hmm. Can you cut multiple at a time, like multiple sheets? Or you got to do one at a time. And you put your si- you have siblings. Do you throw you put them to work? You gotta. <laughs> yeah, I have actually. I've paid my older brother to put these together before. Your older brother. Yeah, my older brother. Okay, that's cool. You got your older brother working for you. Well, I mean, he needed the gas money. Okay, all right, cool. <laughs> so, have you? Are, do you feel like you're at a decent profit place now, where what you're selling for it and your labor and the marketing and all that that you're 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 making a decent profit margin? You're you're happy with? Yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, when I was first starting, it was a lot of work to make one, and I couldn't really sell them for that much. But now I've kind of, I've gotten better at it, so I'm making a little more money based on the time I'm putting in. Your website, your website is octogifts.com. We'll, we'll put a link down below. You got some nice stories on there. Um, mm-hmm. It's very personal. I think you're doing a very good job of marketing that. It's very consistent with what the product is. Sometimes well, people will do marketing, and it's it's not the right colors, it's not the right vibe for the product. But being a gift product, it's a really nice vibe on your website. I just wanted to pay you that compliment. Thank you. I mean, I really have. I've tried to make it like playful. And like I said, you know, sell the experience, not the product. There you go. Who did you learn that from? Who did you hear? Just... Uh, my mom. Your mom. Okay, good, good. That's great. Um, so what, you've gotten some publicity on this too. You're going to get some publicity here, putting it up on YouTube. Has that been fun, telling your story? going public I mean I think when I was 15 I wasn't comfortable speaking with people but you're very fairly good at that too seems like you're learning so many things with this project is that true it's not just about making a few bucks it's about I don't know growing I mean maybe when you're 15 you don't think about it like that but (laughs) you know what I mean well I mean I yeah I've definitely learned a lot from this I mean it's like help me with like you know time management just simple skills like that but then also speaking like i gave a pitch for this idea at a pitch competition once and that was something i right before that i actually didn't want to do it i wanted my mom to do it but then i decided like about five minutes before the competition that i was going to do this uh-huh 
So it's really kind of pushed me out of my comfort zone, and I think that's been a good thing. You want to you want to say, Mom, just go ahead and sell this thing, and just give me a little bit of money, and you do all the work. And now it's quite the opposite. You've you've mm -hmm. taken on pretty much every aspect of this: the publicity, the manufacturing, the. Do, have you saved up enough money where you're not using your parents' money to float the manufacturing anymore? It's basically your money now. It's your company. It's your money. And when you need to put more money into manufacturing, it's money you've already made, right? Yeah, I mean, that's, it's nice. Yeah, it's isn't nice. that cool? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's cool. So what, what's your long-term goal with this? You said, oh, it'd be really cool to license this, but you're having a lot of fun just continuing to sell it and just experiencing selling it yourself, too. Um, I do. I kind of, I do like selling it myself. I mean, I think it would be great to license it and just kind of have someone else make it for me. Yeah. But I don't mind selling it myself because then I can put like a personal touch, like I can write a little handwritten note or something in there. Uh, it's a long term, just kind of a way to make some money, like just as a high schooler. And then, yeah, also it's good experience. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to, do you want to expand your product line? How many different products do you have now? Oh, uh, right now I think I have, oh gosh. Uh, I'd say maybe 12. I have, wow. I've got, obviously, I've got like the first one that I sold, which is just the Valentine's Day one. And then I've got these. And I've got, I've sold a couple like little kind of extras that you can get. Like I make one that's like a little baseball cap that goes on the top. Mm -hmm. And one that turns it into a snowman, which I sold for the holidays. And I also did, I did a fundraiser with my high school where I sold them as these, like, to support the oh, senior class. Yeah, the team. So I've got my school logo on there. So it's just, it's been really fun, like, playing with the idea and just making different products. So you, at school, you got other kids to do it as a fundraiser, and you got them, that was, your, like, your sales force for a little while. Uh, well, more, I was selling them to the parents, like, to buy for their seniors, and then we donated a portion of the proceeds back to the school to pay That's for seniors. Very cool, very cool. And then you sell on your website, octogifts.com. We'll put the link down below, too. Um, why octogifts? I have a guess. But I, I was probably somewhere on your website. Maybe I didn't read it. But why Why the name? I actually, I picked that name um, in 2018. The summer of 2018, I was trying to sell artwork that nobody except my aunt bought. But it was it was prints of artwork, and I thought ink, so like octopus. And then the biggest thing actually is the the domain name was available, so I okay. don't have any no shopoctogifts.com. It's just plain and simple octogifts.com. Right. It's pretty catchy. It's nice. Mm -hmm. Okay, so twelve products. That's a lot. Are you gonna maybe expand more? Are you do gonna go into any other distribution channels? try to get it in a few stores or maybe other schools or uh, are you kind of just figuring that all out? Um, I'm not actually sure which direction I want to take it right now. So I'm still mm -hmm. figuring that out. But I do I have to say my favorite part of this is just designing them. I like the idea of having sketches of something that I then can turn into a real physical thing that I can hold. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's great. It's like I always say inventing, you know, artists, if they don't sell their their artwork to individuals so they can put it in their in their homes on the walls or to museums where people can appreciate it. It's like, what's the point? You know, you're just sitting there in your garage and doing artwork. And for inventors, you know, you want people to buy your product and enjoy it. Right. Mm -hmm. And and that's when you're really an inventor and you kind of. The, you're, you're kind of meshed both those worlds, the artist and the inventor, which is pretty much the same thing. But you've meshed both those worlds where you're an artist, you're an inventor, you're enjoying it, but you're getting yourself out there in the world so other people can enjoy your product. And it's not just you're making with the gifts thing, which you probably like, you're not just making the person happy that's giving it, but that's getting it too. So yeah. that's that must be pretty fulfilling. So maybe you have a real... Um, a real uh, future in the gift industry. Um, we've had a lot of students license products in the gift industry. You might come across some products that you can't manufacture on your own. You can license them. If you did ever want to license this, um, some companies really like the the kids story. You know, it'd be part of the packaging and part of the product or that sort of thing. 
But it sounds to me like you're having so much fun on your own right now and you have just total ownership of it. Um, I just have fun with it, man, and enjoy it. You know, mm-hmm. yeah. You know, it's, it's really funny that you bring up the, the whole uh, inventor slash artist thing because my business card, my title on there is actually entrepreneur slash artist. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Be proud of that. I mean, that's how you see yourself. And I think with your types of products, that's how people see you too. You know, um, I think that's really cool. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know where, where are you going to go from here? You think you're 15. So you got to figure that out, man. You got, you got to figure that out today. <laughs> you know, Oh, I know what I was going to ask you. I was, I was having a brain fart there. Part of my language. I was going to ask you, which is a really important question. Other kid inventors are, you're 15, probably don't like being called a kid, whatever. Other teenagers or other kids that are preteens. What is your advice to them? That's what I wanted to ask. I was trying to remember that. I think they're going to take it a lot more seriously coming from you than coming from me. You know, so what's, what's your advice? Um, I would say, I think the most the biggest driver of my success so far has been my help, like from my, my network. So my mom and my dad, they both have a lot of experience. It's been really helpful to me, but then also people who are part of these communities that I'm in, um, that just have a lot more experience in this kind of thing than I do. And I, it's just, it's really nice to be able to ask someone, what should I do or to get advice? And I would say, don't take that for granted and definitely, Ask people for help because there's definitely someone who knows a lot better than you. Yeah. I I don't think that's just advice for kids. I think that's advice for the adults watching too. (laughs) That's good advice. A lot of inventors really struggle on their own for a long time. And um, so what you're saying is tap into the support network you have. And if you don't have it, look out, reach out. I'm sure you're like, for instance, you reached out to somebody that was doing the fundraisers. You didn't know how fundraisers work, but they kind of educated you on that, right? And then Mm -hmm. you learned how to do a fundraiser, you know, and then you got involved in it. And so, and that wasn't your immediate family, but you weren't afraid to reach out and ask for help. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, yeah, cool. Well, Sebastian, um, thank you so much for coming on. It's an honor to interview you. Um, I look forward to interviewing you again. If you have any updates, any new products, any updates, anything you want to share. So you're always welcome back, man. Thank you for having me. All right. So I'll remind everybody to take care, keep inventing, and we'll catch up with you next time. See you. Bye. There's a great idea in each of us. But it's truly magical to see it come to life. Sharing your creativity with the world has never been easier. We can help.